the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. Well, good morning and welcome to Unity of London, all of you who are on this Zoom call, all who may watch at a later time, and all of you who are with us in spirit. We are grateful for your time, energy, and sharing with us your divine spirit. So our vision is a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. So what world do you envision? Do you envision a world full of love and peace and harmony? Or what words are relevant for you and for our listeners? So just think about that. And our mission is to transform lives. And so if you're out to transform lives and to inspire people to make a positive difference in the world, how can you do that? Maybe it's as simple as a smile, a kind word, a wave if you've got your mask on so people know that you are paying attention. And so let us take this all into prayer after we talk about our spirit groups, which have started on Monday, October the 19th. It's still not too late to join. And I have, uh, so if you're interested, please contact Sylvia Vanderhoek at gmail.com or Catherine Bro at kbro at gmail.com. Uh, I'm understanding that the spirit groups are, are really, uh, have been going well. And so I encourage any of you who are interested to please um, check out those spirit groups on Monday. So let us go into prayer. So if you can just close your eyes, if that feels comfortable and relax wherever you are. And as we come together today, this first Sunday of November, 
we are grateful for the opportunity to spend this time with our community. And we take into account the power for November, which is the power of release, the power of release. And so we affirm quietly together, I release anything and everything that no longer serves my unfolding good. I release anything and everything that no longer serves my unfolding good. And so as we think about that, we think about, well, what can we give up that is no longer serving us? Are we holding a little grudge towards someone? Or is it more than a grudge? Can we open our hearts, open our minds, and consider how our world would be different if we were to let go of that grudge. So today we bless everyone attending all spiritual gatherings, knowing that there are many paths to the one God. And we continue to hold in prayer, unity of Mississauga and unity of Barry. And at this time, we also hold in prayer all of the people in our unity community who may need our loving support right now. And today, we especially are holding Minnie Van Eyck in prayer. Minnie has just gone through a surgery and is recovering nicely. And so she is open to receive cards and emails at this time from the people that she knows and loves in this community. And so also we ask that at this point you whisper into your space the names of people that you would like to hold in prayer. And so we are grateful for all of those people, all of the people that make a difference in our lives, all of the people that we are connected with, all of the people that bring us joy and love and zeal in our lives. And we bless them all now. And so it is. And so we let it be. Jane will be sharing another of Unity of London's core values, listening in the quiet of our hearts to the voice of spirit. Okay, and the daily word that I read for today is on remember. So I will read out that one. I bless the people whose lives have touched mine. Grandparents, parents, siblings, members of my extended family, teachers, friends, co-workers, every person I've known has, by his or her example, helped me feel more deeply what it means to be human. Some have encouraged my curiosity. Some have taught me life skills. Some have loved me. Some have modeled positive attitude and behaviors. Some have loved me fully and unselfishly, and some have helped me learn to love even when loving felt difficult. Today, I remember the people whose lives have touched mine. I pause to think kindly of each one as I savor memories of times we spent together. Whether we are still in one another's lives, have lost touch, or are separated by death. I know the experiences we have shared continue to enrich our lives and deeply bless us on our spiritual journeys. I remember you always in my prayers. Romans chapter one, verse nine. I now have the pleasure of introducing our speaker for this morning, Catherine Bro. 
Catherine has been a student of new thought since 1986 and has gradually and consistently applied the unity principles and practices. Her life today is unrecognizable from when she first started down this road. It was the unity new thought message that inspired her and gave her the courage to emerge from a life of addiction and hopelessness. The past 34 years have been a process of spiritual study and personal introspection and awakening. The past few years have been transformational as she has answered the call to become an ordained minister with International Metaphysics Ministries. Most recently was just officially notified that she has passed her master's in metaphysical science and is currently studying for her certification as a master facilitator. Catherine facilitated the course in love at Unity for two years and currently welcomes anyone to join the Wednesday morning group studying the Way of Mastery series, as well as the recent introduced spirit groups. Let's give a warm welcome to Catherine. Good morning. Can you hear me? Okay. Normally I can see myself, so this is a treat. I can't see myself. <laughs> Thank you for that warm introduction, Jane. I really appreciate it. Ah, so today we're talking about giving up the good life for the better life. And let's face it, 2020 may not have dredged up a lot of thoughts or, or dreams about a better life. However, we can wake up to a better life regardless of outer conditions. Whenever we choose, it really is up to us individually and together. The Dr. Nikki Golden's message last week inspired me to borrow this topic from her. Originally, I was going to talk about unity's power for November, which is elimination. That's why I have the color russet on today. That is the color for elimination. And then I got the idea to combine that with the better life. What could we eliminate from our lives that would manifest a better life? Well, we all live a pretty good life now, don't we? I mean, let's face it. Isn't it just easier to settle for good? So why are we talking about the better life? Does that sound selfish or maybe you consider it to be a malcontent? But, you know, think about it. When you think of a better life, what comes to mind? Is it a bigger house or a new car or luxury vacations? And then do you set limits on how much better it could get? When you let your creativity and your imagination just run wild, do you block it or suppress it? Do some things just feel impossible or maybe a little ridiculous? Well, today I'm going to share some ideas with you, some suggestions that I think will free you from some things that are blocking you from a better life. Because first, I had to identify what those things were. Now, let's expand this question from material ideas to our spiritual life. Haven't we all done a lot of work to grow spiritually? I mean, come on. We meditate, we pray, we read books, we take classes, we attend retreats, we come to Sunday service. Compared to 20 or 30 years ago, life has gotten a lot better for most of us. But how many of us know in our hearts that life could still be better? But we tend to shrink when it comes to trying, don't we? Maybe we believe that it's honorable or humble to stay small. Maybe we believe that we've done enough. And now it's time to just kick back. Could it be a fear of standing out and being visible or being vulnerable? Could it be a fear of not being enough 
Or how about being too much? What if all we had to do was stop, just stop and question our own relationship with life? Just you. That means stop trying to change others and focus on yourself. Do you have the courage to be honest, first with yourself and then with others about what you truly feel and think about life? Your life, independent of anyone else, Charles Fillmore describes life in his metaphysical Bible dictionary as life is divine, spiritual, and its source is God or spirit. Life is within man in his spiritual consciousness. So ask yourself, how do I relate to life? Allow me to ask just a few questions here. Some of you will relate and some of you may not. Do you live in a life positive universe? In a world that is safe? Do you see life as circumstance and lifestyle? Do you fear death? Yours or maybe someone else's? that life just won't be enjoyable without someone's physical presence? Do you expect life to be difficult? And that's your idea of handling the ups and downs and reducing disappointment? Maybe you struggle financially and then to satisfy that, you count every penny you spend, reinforcing the struggle. Do you have secrets that negatively impact relationships? Does that feel like you're protecting someone? How many of us avoid looking at ourselves by focusing on those who appear to be needy, telling yourself you're empowering them? This was a big, big something for me that I needed to eliminate. Now let's ask ourselves another very direct question. I ask you to please close your eyes just for a few seconds and go to your heart space and ask yourself this question. How would I show up if I believed the universe was conspiring to give me everything I need? How would I show up if I believed the universe was conspiring to give me everything I need? Do you think your relationship with life would shift? Would take on a quality of being better? Originally, Charles did not use the word elimination as one of unity's powers. He used the word renunciation. So I looked up the definition of renunciation in the dictionary, and it said relinquishment, abandonment, resignation, recantation, and expulsion. I really related to the finality of those words. Kind of like instead of saying I'm going to lose weight as if I'm going to look around for it later or to say I'm going to let that go and yet somehow it seems to stay on the shelf for future use. To relinquish means it is done, isn't it? As does elimination. Elimination is the faculty. Charles loved that word for power, faculty or ability. Elimination is the faculty by which we release false beliefs and accomplish a mental cleansing. Now, doesn't that create a vision? So maybe one of the things we need to eliminate is ambiguity and have the courage 
to be clear, direct, and straightforward, to eliminate any wishy-washy, to speak the truth without filtering it. We call that being authentic. And contrary to popular belief, this is incredibly kind, very helpful, and benefits everyone. So elimination of beliefs or patterns that block us enables us to surrender to our inner spirit. Any thought that is not for our highest good so that transformation and purification of consciousness can take place. What Charles dubbed mental cleansing. So it came to me as I was preparing for today that Charles and Myrtle weren't really teachers. They were actually facilitators of the awakening process. Their personal journeys were quite different. Myrtle eliminating belief in serious health challenges and replacing it with spiritual truth. My body does not inherit sickness. And Charles following her footsteps to surrender his attachment with the collective consciousness in the material world that had controlled his thinking and behavior for many years. As they each broke free of the shackles of their earlier teachings, they were able to unlock their power centers or faculties and began showing up as power-filled co-creators. They started to show up in alignment with the truth. No ambiguity, they were eager to share their spiritual awakening with anyone who was interested. They didn't say, hey, you, you look like you could use a spirit boost. Sit down here and let me tell you how that works. No, no. They modeled their transformations and started to share in small groups how the process had unfolded for them. They shared their resources they held the possibility for others to be transformed and they supported all who asked for love, compassion, and direct guidance. They were not wishy-washy. They did not do it for the money, but manifested absolute prosperity and abundance. As they say, the rest is history. <laughs> Do you think they discounted their vision of how vast unity could become? I don't think so. They seem to live in the question, what is mine to do? And they left the results up to universal spirit. We're studying lessons in truth with Emily Cady in our spirit groups and in the first chapter, titled Bondage or Liberty, she says, we have come to a place now where our search for truth must no longer be for the rewards. It must no longer be our seeking a creed to follow, but it must be our living a life. In these simple lessons, we shall take only the first steps out of bondage, selfishness, lust, and sorrow toward the land of liberty where perfect love and all good exist. She goes on to say, every right thought that we think, every unselfish word or action is bound by immutable laws to be fraught with good results. But in our walk, we must learn to lose sight of results that are like the loaves and fishes. We must rather seek to be the truth, to consciously be love, to be wisdom, to be life, as we really are, and let the results take care of themselves. Wow. She goes on to talk about how one can really grow spirit, one cannot really grow spiritually without a practice of meditation and prayer to connect with the presence of spirit, much the same as no master musician could become such without serious practice. And a very practical thing that Emily recommends that we eliminate is the time we spend in idle conversation with people who just run in for a few moments to be entertained. 
she says, if you can help such people, fine. If not, gather yourself together and do not waste a moment idly diffusing and dissipating yourself to gratify their idleness. She says, you have no idea what you lose by doing this. Is that something we can look at eliminating to have the better life, to make more time for meditation and prayer and acts of love? Hmm. Keep in mind, she wrote that a long time ago before there was TV and Netflix. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> So let's chat just for another minute about elimination. What we're really talking about here is something called self-actualization or getting real. Self-actualization is defined as the achievement of one's full potential through creativity, independence, spontaneity, and grasp of the real world, your inner world. And many of you know, I've been studying metaphysics for the past few years, and that has brought me much closer to authors and leaders of new thought movement and has allowed me to relinquish a lot of thoughts, words, and beliefs that just kind of come naturally out of nowhere. After reading Rev. Paul Hasselbeck's book again, titled Heart-Centered Metaphysics, I am considering eliminating all reference to God as he, she, father, mother, or, or any pronouns that take on the form of a person. I also want to eliminate once and for all the vindictive God that I was raised to believe in. Unity believes that God is spirit, God is principle, God is law, God is love, God is divine mind. These words express power. For me, and maybe for some of you, the word God is still attached to some pretty negative vision. All I want to do is eliminate that vision, that connection. I'm not denouncing the word God. Please, please, please hear that. I am simply suggesting a way to purify or cleanse our understanding of God and our automatic response. If your automatic response still includes fear-based thoughts, you may want to try this. When we say spirit or divine mind or um, any of those other names we use in unity, it never brings up a negative connotation. Charles refers to God as father, and then he defines father as the Christ nature eliminating any form or human attributes. I feel quite supported in this suggestion as I read Heart-Centered Metaphysics when he states that referring to ourselves as a child of God, son or daughter of God, that it reinforces misconceptions of God that are deeply embedded theology. If this upsets you, I understand. I absolutely understand. This is not semantics. This is about eliminating old, disempowering connotations of God that continues to hold people in bondage. So, I am clearly not saying we should never use the word God. I am clearly not saying that. What I am suggesting is that we use spirit or universal law or principle or divine mind until we can free ourselves from all the disempowering messages that have been dumped on us. Hasselbeck concludes that vigilance in our use of language will help us to better understand unity theology and also manifest in raised consciousness. This way, we will more quickly grow into the awareness of oneness or divine mind or Christ nature, whatever supports your unfolding. You know something? I think our parents were right <laughs> when they taught us we really do need to watch our language. <laughs> 
If this is not an issue for you, by all means, continue with your freedom to use whatever words empower you. We are all on our own journey with each other. And let's face it, no process of awakening would be complete without gaining the power to empower others, to be the light of love and attraction, which manifests in all parties being raised in consciousness. That's when you enter the better life. It becomes the manifestation of letting go of all the words and behaviors or patterns that block you from spirit. What keeps us in the good life? We just said, it's words, behaviors, and patterns. And again, I say, many of these are automatic, unconscious. It's pretty easy to get complacent especially when a lot of automatic thoughts sound like this. Let's just keep the peace. Don't rock the boat. Stick with the sure thing. Life is just not easy. Marriage is hard work. A penny saved is a penny earned. How about don't get too big for your britches? I heard that one a lot. Many of us know in our hearts that life could be so much better, but we shrink when it comes to trying. Why? Do we believe it's honorable or humble to stay small? Do we believe that for us to have more means someone else will do without? It's a fear of standing out. We need to go within to answer these questions with much vulnerability and great desire to live a better life. Great desire to do this. All of these questions we've been asking are really very disempowering, sorry, questions, aren't they? We are conditioned to ask ourselves, how can I stop the pain? How can I pay these bills? What's wrong with me? Who's to blame for this? When will I be happy? Why me? The universe will answer you on all of these questions too. Well, you were born to people who never should have been parents, sweetheart. You were treated so badly as a child, no wonder. Oh, you've had so much sickness in your life. Well, what do you expect? He's an alcoholic. Are these the answers that empower you? But sometimes they feel good, don't they? Let's go within just for a few moments together. Let's get quiet and breathe. And I'd like to offer up a few empowering questions for you to ask spirit and see if you experience a difference. These are not rational questions. These are questions of the heart. First question. What is trying to emerge in my life? Just rest in that for a few moments. What is trying to emerge in my life? Next, what is my gift to share with life? Just rest in that without allowing limiting thoughts to enter. What is my gift to share? Next question. What is the highest and best use of my time today? What is the highest and best use of my time today? Do you feel the difference? Do you sense the guidance? Do you sense the power? Hopefully this inspires you to practice being kinder, more loving and more compassionate to yourself. 
This week, I would like you to take all those thoughts of love and compassion and empathy that you have for others in your life, and I want you to turn it right back toward yourself and to ask yourself, how may I most easily eliminate what gets in my way? Ready to say yes to a better life? Let's take this into meditation. Hmm. As we all know how to breathe in and breathe out and to allow ourselves to be fully immersed in this moment, in this time, this right now together. And let us open up to the divine, deeper order of life's process as we say yes to an even better life. We celebrate how far we have come. We are limitless in our vision of continued growth. rise above any challenges that keep us imprisoned in a world of limitation. As we eliminate these challenges with the cleansing of our mind, allowing divine mind to be our guide, As we realize that no one and no thing can stop us from the attainment of our highest good, we can seize the reins of life and ride with power into a new existence, a better life. Just hold that in our hearts and our spirits and allow our soul to expand into this consciousness as we rest in the silence.
possibility for each one of us to enter into the better life, whatever that is. And we say thank you, thank you, thank you, sweet spirit.
We'd like to take this moment to thank everyone for their continued ties and gifts to your spiritual community. We all continue to be prosperous. That is how the flow of prosperity works. As we give, so shall we receive. And so we say the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God folds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is. And all is well. Yea, God. And as Larry had mentioned, um, we, there will be no words with this. It will be Jake's music in the background. So let's enjoy our peace song and sing along at home, if you will. have a great day everyone and if you can if you can stay for a while and we'd like to hear any questions or comments that you have for Catherine about her talk today so I think Larry can you or maybe you can unmute yourself so if anybody has any questions or comments um, can you just please raise your hand or there's a reaction button at the bottom too, where you can clap and do all sorts of great things. So, <laughs> oh, thumbs up from Sylvia and Larry. That's a good, Amber would like to, to say awesome. something. Awesome. Amber, unmute you so yourself, much. please. Catherine, that was absolutely phenomenal. Oh. Absolutely phenomenal. And Larry, kudos for you for this slideshow at the end there that was so touching and here. just incredible all the way around my pleasure thank you thank you don't you love those kids oh they I just make do. you smile out loud oh. don't they yeah yeah and i'm also taking the metaphysics course with wendy carr currently Absolutely. on tuesday evenings and with with paul hasselback's book incredible a beautiful journey and thank you again Catherine for such an amazing message oh thank you thank you so much I was really quite concerned that it was too serious because I usually <laughs> like to add some laughter no it, it it took it went right to the heart and it it was phenomenal thank you god bless yeah okay anyone else have some comments